These are some images that we got from the digital printing people to show us how it's gonna get cut up. This mosaic of colored parts will eventually be assembled into seven different bronze seating structures. This is the largest one of them. It's called Groves and Stones, and it's the work of Oregon artist Julian Watts and Baker City's Blue Mountain Fine Art. My name's Tyler Fouts, and uh, I'm the owner of Blue Mountain Fine Art. It's an art foundry. It's in Baker City, Oregon. Over the last 20 years, Blue Mountain Fine Art has become known for producing bronze art that can best be described as contemporary. They work with national artists like Deborah Butterfield and Jim Dine, and local artists like Brenna Kimbrough, Bill Will, and Dana Lewis. But the process by which that art is made goes back some 5,000 years. In the ancient world, bronze's strength and ability to hold fine detail made it highly desirable for everything from coins, to weapons, to fine art, and shows up in cultures as varied as China and Egypt, India and Greece. It hasn't changed very much. What has changed is things like the digital printing, but still most pieces we have to mold. The technique is known as lost wax casting, and it starts here in the mold room. The artists send us an original sculpture and we take it through the process of making it into a bronze. The process by which a sculpture is made into one of the most durable materials in the world starts with one of the most flexible. We use a urethane rubber and just paint it on with a brush. And after the rubber's up to thickness, then we make what we call a mother mold, which is the plaster mold. After the mother mold is done, a collection of gates or feeders are attached that will allow liquid bronze to be poured into it. That's what's happening over here. The red gates on there are, are, are sprues that will eventually be the feeding system for the bronze to flow through. After the mold's made, we'll pour wax into this and you'll end up with wax parts. Then we just let it cool down and then just pop it apart and peel the wax out of there. This piece here is the part we want in bronze. It's the artwork. And the rest of this here is just a feeder system. Once the wax form and gating or feeder system is ready, it's time for the slurry room. So all the parts are brought in here and then we will uh, put a ceramic shell coating on them. We dip it into the slurry, we call it. It's a silica binder. And then we apply sand to it. It takes one fine coat, one medium coat, and anywhere from six to eight coarse coats. We have to air dry them in between coats. Um, after they've gone through the process of dipping and they're up to thickness, then we take them out and we burn the wax out of them in the kiln. In this burnout oven, the wax is lost or melts out of the heat resistant shells. You can see how it's sloped to the bottom and there's a hole in the middle and underneath there's a container to capture the wax. After we've uh, burned them out, they'll be ready to go into the oven to be preheated and poured. The bronze pouring process, even in the 21st century, is done pretty much as it has been for millennia. Bronze is heated into a molten state and poured directly into the molds. The technique is ancient, 
but no less compelling. Anything left is poured into an ingot to be used again in the next pour. Once cooled, the mold is broken off. And then all this stuff will get cut off right at the panel. And then that's the art is the top piece. This is the piece we want right here. And uh, it, go in and get sandblasted and it'll, at that point it'll be ready to get worked on by the metal shop. Depending on the size of the piece, some pieces can be a hundred parts, some pieces can be just one part. So the bigger pieces have to be welded together and then tooled. We use sanders, grinders, air hammers, all kinds of things to make different textures so that we can match the texture on the piece. Afterwards, it's time to put the patina on. Various chemicals make different colors. After we get the color the way we like it, then we warm the piece up and we wax it, and that seals it. At that point, the piece is pretty much finished. In the spring of 2023, Groves and Stones was installed in downtown Bellevue, Washington. The setting is urban and contemporary. But the art was handmade in Baker City, Oregon. We're a service to the artist, so it's kind of like being involved in that process. And in the end, there's a lot of satisfaction in knowing that a piece that I install in Seattle, you know, my grandkids can go see it someday. Oregon Art Beat shares the stories of Oregon's amazing artists and member support completes the picture. Join us as a sustaining member at opb.org video.